New on Curiosity Stream, how do you connect a 16th century potato to limitless energy production? Could Napoleon's toothpick have a direct link to a machine that predicts the future? And how can a 1700s conch shell chart a course to humans connecting their brains to the internet? James Burke's visionary series, Connections, returns for a new generation. Experience all new Connections. With monthly, annual, and bundled plans, find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. I'm Israel, former Green Beret. I'm Cameron Fath, former Army Ranger, and you guys already know what the deal is. The Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast coming at you hot and heavy, but let's be real. This is your favorite podcast That's right. on the internet. You can't get along without it. Nope, can't do it. And I did a little motif in there, a little bit of foreshadowing. Hey. If you didn't notice there, when I said, let me break it down for you. When I said, let's get real, I'm actually talking about exactly what we're going to be talking about today, which is what, Izzy? Uh, we're talking about, uh, you know, a lot of times we talk about all sorts of crazy stuff, but it's, it does intersect with like real life events, right? Yeah. So today we're doing all sorts of stuff, uh, pop culture brick a brack and stories that have happened in real life, just exactly. based on real life. So, Basically when the screen is black and it says based on true events. Yeah, based on real life. I, I like how, you ever notice how over the years that has gotten more and more vague? It used to be based on a true story mm-hmm. and then it was like uh, based on real, based events. on a real story, real yeah. events, and then it's like based on actual events. Like based, It's What's like based next? on things that happened at one time. <laughs> yeah, based, and it's going to be, and that's it's not even going to be based on now. It's going to be like premised. About. Yeah, yeah. Inspired. They do inspired. inspired by real events. But then that's not very, that's very vague. That's very, because like, like, you can really. Yeah, like we started with this idea that actually happened, and then we just kind of did whatever we wanted yeah. to. And then you yeah. get Lone Survivor. And Ooh, you get Lone Survivor. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That was, yeah. Oh, that's Ooh. why I didn't put it on the list. <laughs> oh, because you knew we were going to get into it? Or wait, what? you guys. Oh, oh, I did put it on the list. Wait uh, a minute, you guys. Izzy tell Wait a minute. Can we list. just take a break and just, it, what's up with Lone Survivor? Oh, no. Okay. Let me just clear the I air. heard it's not accurate. Oh yeah, there is a lot of rumors, and the there they may not be rumors because Rangers conducted the rescue and okay. recovered the bodies from the downed bird and rescued Marcus Luttrell. Okay, um, and in the book there is a quite a bit of exaggeration of how many fighters that they actually ended up fighting. Like in the uh, movie, they like are being completely, like op- yeah, they're like 200 dudes in the book and everything, but it, it, it most likely and comp- uh, compare or at least told by like actual events and shit that was happening was it was more like a platoon size. Mm. So 200 versus 30 guys. Yeah, 30 guys, but in all reality, like it was a real life mission. Like, People lost their lives. Went, went a wrong. A lot of people lost their yeah, lives. Yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, the, and, because uh, the SEAL QRF team. Yeah, the entire QRF bird that mm. went that was mobilized was wiped out. Yep. So, like, obviously, it was a massive loss of life, and you have to have a little bit of respect for. You actually, no, you have to have a lot of bit of respect for that. <laughs> but obviously, Hollywood does what Hollywood does, and the book as well is exaggerated. But uh, there's a lot of controversy mm. around those. Okay, all right. Thanks for clearing that up. I did not. Yeah. I you know you hear. When it comes to these movies and, and stuff that we're going to be reviewing today, um, you there's things something called artistic license, yes. you know, quote unquote, where they have to like maybe uh, shorten events or multiply characters or combine characters and events to kind of like for dramatic effect or mm-hmm. something. But it's it, sometimes it's like goes way too far to be like, OK, what are we even basing this off of? You know? Yeah. And I mean, back to the Lone Survivor thing, just because I feel like I have to get it off my chest. Get it off your chest. Man. But like, you know exaggeration or not exaggeration putting yourselves in that type of you know scenario where that amount of loss like happens uh you know obviously there was a book about it and like it was over exaggerated and you know to make it look more 
more appealing or whatnot. Yeah. But still, like being if you were in that scenario, like being Marcus Luttrell and having your entire team like wiped out, it's gonna cause damage. And like I would just hate to like I would never want to be in that in, uh, mm-hmm. scenario, mm-hmm. regardless if it was two hundred fighters or like you know thirty. But th- there was aspects of it which I'm like okay, like it didn't matter to me if it was super like. You know, it was. I mean, I still watched the movie and I still like shed a tear because that's yeah. that's hard, especially in the end credits when they show all the pictures yeah, of the like dudes. everybody. And I'm yeah. just like, no matter if it was exaggerated, it was still a tragic event. Yeah. So, also but alive. we're here to talk about what Hollywood does. Yeah, so, that's right. I <laughs> just want to preface with that. Not, I don't want to be like the hater because there's way too many haters in the military and for people yeah. doing what they're doing. Um, I'm just happy that some people are finding success through the uh, struggles of other people. But anyways, <laughs> we're going to talk about, you know, some movies that were based on true events, inspired by actual happenings, have you, whatever way you swing. <laughs> Let's get into it. Yeah, go for it, man. Okay, first one that just sticks out right to me. You guys have heard us talk about this a lot. Uh, Black Hawk Down. Black right. Hawk Down, baby. Operation Gothic Serpent. Yep. Third Ranger Battalion, Biko with Delta. Some elements, uh, 160th SOAR, the Special Operations Aviation Regiment. Uh, and then you have 10th Mountain that kind of sh- isn't really featured in the movie, but mm-hmm. they were there too at the end um, in that base that they like do the Moog Mile to, you know? Um, so that one, yeah, absolute carnage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's I'm part of a Ranger Facebook group, and there was like a bunch of dudes that were in Mogadishu on it, and like they... Tell the tale and eat. Oh my god! Like it was, it was gnarly. Like yeah. it had, it, it was a gnarly event, right? Yeah. I mean, we lost how many? I'm gonna look up some statistics. But what do you, what do you think about the Gothic Serpent, man? Well, you know what? I, I'm a big fan of Mark Bowden, uh, and he wrote the book. And um, I said he, he, he's. I actually went to a book signing at a Barnes and Nobles back when they existed. But mm. forget <laughs> that when they weren't turned into. Uh, uh, yeah. the what the uh it's the Halloween right. superstores that's everywhere. right Halloween superstores everywhere but anyway he uh he he was doing a book signing for guests of the Ayatollah at the time and he said you know if you want to if you want people to be into history tell good stories you know and I've always really appreciated that about him um I know that they change some stuff uh fairly accurate but they change a few things like from the book like characters were in different places than they were you know um in in the book or whatever, like in the movie and stuff like that, like character names and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I <laughs> I I really this it's funny, Black Hawk Down, this is, was the first night I was at reception battalion uh for the army before we actually go to basic training. You spend a couple days at reception battalion and then we watched this movie. We watched Black Hawk Down. Yeah. And uh, everyone loved uh, you know it's a good depiction of the military brotherhood, you know, um uh, the relationships that they had, you know, and and uh I like that. I like that they show showcase both um, the Delta Force and the Ranger Battalion, you know, yeah. and what they and them working together and things like that, you know. I mean, that um, relationship is still alive and kicking too. Yeah, yeah. Like, you've talked about you working with them. Uh, people don't really know that, like, and I, I'll be the first one to say it. Like Ranger Regiment, a hundred percent supports like Delta Force to this day. Mm-hmm. It's like that's one of the things we literally deploy to do is we deploy and support a lot of times of delta force because Mm -hmm. a lot of people don't realize that uh like the structure of delta they don't have machine guns like they don't have belt (laughs) yeah i I learned that really quickly you learned that the hard way (laughs) yeah i know right my my story where you took my mark 48 and like gave it back to me later but they don't they don't have like a a dedicated weapons squad Mm -hmm. so the assets that regiment have we have you know a Carl Gustav team. We have an entire weapon squad with, you know, a bunch of two forties, Mark 48s, like heavy weapons. So most of the time, like regiment, if, if Delta is doing a raid regiment will act as their blocking positions mm. and like set up a cordon and basically allow Delta to go and do freedom maneuver on the objective. And then regiment is there supporting them. So that happens all the time. And mm. like Black Hawk down, like Gothic serpent was just like, it goes back, re- like that relationship goes back far. That's really cool. If you want, uh, I don't know where people find it these days because it's on like the DVD commentary, the Blu-ray commentary, but they actually have a, a commentary track with some of the Ranger dudes yeah. for Black Hawk Down. It's fun to listen to, you know. And let's see, in in Gothic Serpent, it's it's crazy just thinking about the numbers 
mm-hmm. of like losses. Let's see. It was uh, there was only eighteen American soldiers were KIA during that. Uh, Seventy three were wounded. But then you look at the losses on this uh, of like the Pakistani forces. Let's see. Uh, there were between three hundred fifteen and two thousand Somali casualties. Yeah. So eighteen of us for about like. We'll call it an average fifteen hundred of right. them. I like those I just, numbers. I like those odds. Um, didn't uh, there was somebody else that said that they like as part of the rescue mission? Um, I forget that. I forget there was like a foreign force that I think one of my one of my uh, one of my my people in my Twitch community was like, no, we were there. Our buddies, our people were there, and they were the ones that helped pull those guys out and and you know evac them and stuff like that. It looks you like know? there was Malaysian forces involved. Mal- that Malaysian and forces, then Pakistani force. Pakistani. So like Malaysian forces suffered one death and seven wounded. Pakistani forces suffered one death and two injuries. Mm. And then there were between three hundred fifteen and two thousand Somali casualties. Mm. This is yeah. October third, ninety three. And I, you know, Black Talk Down, I think it was like a saving private Ryan as far as just like really showing like the chaos yeah. of combat. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I think that movie jazzed me. That was like one of the reasons that I like, I didn't know that I was so ignorant and I can't finish my own sentences because <laughs> I'm so jazzed up right now. <laughs> Good, do it, man. That like, that is a true, you heard me talk about warrior culture and yep. like nothing really uh, like signifies how important it is until you watch like movies like that yeah because those dudes even in the worst of it like they never lose hope they never like you know cower down they're always looking for a fight regardless yeah man that's that yeah i love that warrior mentality and and uh and you know you always want people to say there's the famous saying of like you don't know what you're going to do until you're in there yeah. like those guys prove they prove their metal oh yeah, yeah. you know yeah. in that difficult yeah. situation especially like people like Gary Gordon and Randall Shugart the Delta Force dudes that mm-hmm. went down there to defend that helicopter yeah. by themselves exactly. you know and they tragically lost their lives but yep. uh, and they both got the medal of honor uh, yeah. posthumously yep and just like those to the saying you walk with giants and you don't even realize it. Mm. It's like you apps in special operations, you absolutely are surrounded by giants that you have no idea. Mm-hmm. And like, I am so confident that, you know, any one of those dudes would have did the same thing. Yeah. Like, if they were put in that situation. And, uh, I think that's absolutely an amazing reason to not only strive for special operations. But, yeah. I mean, to be a part of that legacy is just like, it's an honor. Yeah. It's an absolute blessing and you know, whatever. But, that's about Black Hawk Down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Can we talk about Glory for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, talk about Glory. That's a very inspiring movie. That it's been a while since I've seen. Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, uh, 1989 film uh, directed by Ed Zwick. Uh, you got Matthew Broderick, Denzel Washington. Actually, mm-hmm. Denzel I think won his first Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in it. Uh, great guy, Carrie Elways, Morgan Freeman. Bunch of great dudes. It's about the 54th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, which was an all black, all American, yeah, man. all black infantry regiment uh, for the Union Army, one of the earliest regiments that fought in the Civil War. You know, uh, and just uh, just super cool. It's one of those like hopeful ones that gives you like, you know, just like hopeful for America. You yeah. know, uh, it's hopeful. like even in the position that those guys were in. Because like, let's be honest, like back then you wouldn't want to be an African American. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's plain. It's plain science. Right? It was it was tough. Yeah. Well, you know, I think if I recall correctly, you guys can correct me, but uh, if I'm wrong, but like, in, I don't think there was some Massachusetts. I don't think ever had any slavery. Like, had it was it was no slavery in Massachusetts. I think. Interesting. Um, so I it makes sense that they would come out of Massachusetts if that's yeah. entirely correct. You know, yeah, that's a good fun fact. Yeah, somebody look it up. Somebody look that up and let us know. Yeah, uh, but I I don't know. That movie just has such a sense of patriotism, and it's just like it lets you know that even in like times of peril, where you think you know, instead of abandoning your country and like just saying you know it's our country is shit, and, throwing your hands up, yeah, and throwing kind of your hands up, up and like throwing a fit. That there's actually like instead of just turning your back on it and like just thinking it's the worst, like there is absolutely a sense of patriotism that you can put your foot down and like fight for shit. Yeah, you know? it's not just you, you, you. I mean, it's happened historically. It's like things don't change unless you make change. And like I think Glory is a awesome representation of just like how much you value your country and what we would do for it, regardless of the status it's in. Yeah, man, it's a uh, it's a great. That's why you don't take my guns away, man. <laughs> so I can fucking fight. <laughs> That's right. You ain't gonna take my guns and my Bibles, uh, but yeah, man. It's uh, I I I saw I've seen this movie a couple of times, um, 
And I love it. I love it just because like it shows like the camaraderie, the brotherhood, and yeah. even even with between like the white the the white soldiers and the black soldiers. My favorite moment in the entire movie. Oh, there's a couple, but this one kind of think takes the cakes. But like halfway through the movie, they're you know they're marching and like there's some white soldiers and stuff like that. And the white soldiers like giving them a hard time, saying you guys don't know what war is. You don't know what what it's like up there on the front lines. And and then Denzel's like a loud mouth young dude. He's like, boy, you guys put us up, put the 54 up there. This war would be over. And they get into like a scuffle and stuff. And then later on, when they're going to attack this uh, this fort at the end, uh, they're marching up, and the, the 54th volunteers to be the first ones to attack the fort. And they mm-hmm. know they're going to take massive casualties. Yeah. And they're marching down, getting ready to go. And that same white soldier is there. And he looks at him. He says, "Give him hell, fifty four And they all start cheering and stuff. It's just like and they run up with the American flag yeah. and they're charging. Fix pay, dude. My fucking dick is so hard right now, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. man. It was yeah. Robert Gould Shaw and and all those guys. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. It's just a. It's a. It's a. It's a, a kind of like the common humanity. You know, yeah. today we got a lot of. There's a lot of like groups. There's yeah. a lot of people that kind of separating posses. into their groups and like, oh, you're not like me because you don't have this and this or whatever, you, you know. Uh, but like, there's this idea of like a common humanity, something that unites every single human being, you know, some mm. commonality. And I think that 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 movie Glory like really encapsulates it. It's uh, very well. Lots of emotion, and uh, I mean, fa- fairly accurate as far as I've as far as I know, you know. Yeah. No, I mean, this is why I'm a firm believer that like you want to. A lot of people paint the picture, uh, paint the picture that the military is like a really racist organization, and did you, like that whole white no. supremacy fucking takeover. I think it's oh, bullshit. I hadn't dude. heard about that, but yeah, I don't I, believe I was, it for a second. I think, and I'm a firm believer that the military is the most inclusive uh, group of people, even though it's the most exclusive. Right? You need to be like this tall. You can't be, you know, this weight. You can't, you know. And yeah, and you get people in there, yeah. and sometimes people are still people when they get exactly. the, even after they get into the military. And it's like you know. you know, I served with every single color, every single race, every single fucking gender, whatnot. And mm-hmm. it's just like at the end of the day, you have one goal and one job only, and it's like to come home alive. And it it doesn't really matter whether your differences. Like I've met so many people from different backgrounds, different cultures, whatnot. And it's like, at the end of the day, we had one job and it was like to get good at fighting. Yeah. And that's what we did. And the uniform, yeah. right? It's a uniting ideal. It's a transcendent ideal that goes beyond your individual identity. Mm-hmm. You are foregoing your individual identity for the sake of something bigger than yourself, yeah. you know? And that's, you're not black. You're not white. You're not you know, yellow. You're green. Yeah. Bitch. We're all green. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. and I, I really appreciate that about the, the military in general, because it can like bring people, you can find something common that you have in common with somebody else, even though you may have nothing in common with them. Not, yeah. even, not even maybe general ideals, you know, mm-hmm. or principles, but you both said yes. You both volunteered or you both joined this thing. Yeah. And you because you've been put through the ringer, the same kind of ringer, the same kind of hardships, there's just like this bond. And if that bond can exist there, where else might it exist? You know, where yeah, else so can we, we find it? You know? So, you know, take take some pointers, rest of the world. Become the army. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all just get wait, don't become a big army. No. Don't become a big army. No. Uh glory. So yeah, glory good. Glory's good. There's yeah, a, there's a, a quick one, little man. side note I wanted to include for uh, Glory. Hmm. So, you know, at the end of the yeah. film, you see they just throw Matthew Broderick's body. He's Robert Goldshaw is yep. the name of his character. They just throw him in the grave and he lands next to Denzel Washington. That really happened. They actually, like, buried him in a mass grave with all the other soldiers and they made oh. it to be, like, an insult. Wow. And so, years I later, the Union Army offered to remove his remains and put it in a, uh, like, an officer cemetery. But his parents refused, and they said, "We can imagine no holier place than that in which he lies." Oh, so that's just oh, neat. That's really cool. Yeah, that's neat, and that's inspirational. That's really cool, man. That yeah, because cool. they do a good job of that in the movie of him identifying with and f- and fighting for his men. You mm-hmm. know, because he's like, "These are my men." You yeah. know, and he trains them, and he sacrifices for them, and he loses his, he tears up his paycheck for him. You know, and all, and then he le- and then he ends up leading the charge. You know, yeah. he gets off his horse. You know, and then goes up right to the front, you know. That's so. a good example of what an officer is. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, it's a terrible example of an officer. Band of Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? Lieutenant? Uh, uh, no, it, it, what's his name? It's, it's the biggest insult. Captain. Yeah. Let's see. What's his name? Band? From um, Friends. <laughs> yeah. 
He did such a good job of playing that scheme. Captain Sobel. Yeah, Captain Sobel. Sobel. Yeah. Becomes Major Sobel. Yeah, Major. that's a terrible example example of an officer. <laughs> that dude sucks. <laughs> He's he's a he that guy is all about his uh his O oh, wait what's the officer evaluation for oh we uh let's see N C O E R uh, his O E R the officer evaluation report only cares yeah. about what the higher ups think of him doesn't care about it's like it's it's top down not bottom up for him yep you know and he just cares about the next rank and he doesn't matter what the people think of him or whatnot that guy sucks man yep. do not yeah. promote ahead of peers. But this is this is I think this is such an iconic series, Band of Brothers, uh, of like you would t- encapsulate like the Greatest Generation and what they and when they were at their best, fighting united against this like the world was united against this this the super evil, evil. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah the Nazis and the Axis powers and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, talk about inspirational, you know, and men of character too. Yeah. You know, um, not perfect men by any means. We would never say that, but like people like Richard Winters and and. Carwood Lipton and <laughs> Malarkey and Powers and uh, all these guys uh, and a big All Star cast too. Like, oh yeah, it's so it many launched a lot of dudes. That Jimmy Fallon was in this show. Really? Yeah, you didn't. Uh, he's Lieutenant George. Uh, who does he play? He plays. Let's see, Lieutenant George Rice. Yeah, he's he plays a really small role in it, but it's just <laughs> he's like a supply <laughs> lieutenant or something. But he's in it. I feel like a lot of people, maybe, maybe they did that thing where people just heard about the project. You're like, can I just be in it? I just want to be a small be part. Yeah. yeah. Small part. I mean, I still watch Band of Brothers, even though it's been off for a, a while. It's Dude. just such a good, Spears. it's such a good inspirational thing. Yep. Just, it starts from the bottom, you know, it yep. starts from the train up and start, you see like, you the follow struggles. them through the entire war. Yeah. That's what I love about that. I like that better than like the Pacific, the Pacific kind of jumps around a little bit, you know? Yeah. But no, it's like, you really want to see what these men like, it, 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 it strengthens the bond. And more than anything. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, it, it seems to be a common theme with these real movies. It just highlights. It's all about bonds at the end of the right, day. Like, right, right. About loss and tragedy and about, like, not only loss and tragedy, but then you have the upsides, like, you know, glory and honor and then just the friendships, victory. companionships, yep. leadership, mentorship, like all these good things that we hold of value. Uh, and I think that's what makes, you know, true stories so, like, just motivating and inspirational because it was like, hey, we did that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Something good came out of it. Yeah. It, it highlights you can use a war story or a war movie or a video game to highlight the worst in humanity and then also the best in humanity because it's the most intense situation that like a human being can undergo, you know, yeah. going to war, you know, and then especially back then, you know, as you go further and further back, war got more and more brutal because of technology advancements or, you know, or, or lack of technology, lack of medical care, lack of coordination, you know, and all that kind of stuff or whatever. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but, and yet in the midst of all these, uh, and they did a good job in this series, Band of Brothers, of like just showing the friendships, the relationships. It's all about relationships at yeah. the end of the day, you know, and, and having good relationships and being there for each other and sacrificing your life, literally your life. Cause you know, it's, it's a you know it's a Bible verse and that's it's just I think it's a lot of people agree it's like great, greater love hath no man than this that he give up his life for his friends because yes. self preservation is bedrock to the human condition like yeah. everybody nobody you know only the weird you know only weird people are going to go out and like just kill themselves or whatever but it's yeah. like the idea of not only am I going to not preserve my own life but I'm going to preserve my life for others for others for somebody else you know? yeah. That's super interesting, man. Yeah, Band of Brothers, man. Band of Brothers, great class. If you haven't watched Band of Brothers, Do uh, you... go ahead and just turn into oncoming traffic because I know you're driving. But <laughs> if not, hurry home and start it. Because yes, yeah, go the yeah, second yeah. option. The second, second option. Uh, go for the latter. But Do no, you... Band of Brothers is an absolute must watch. If you're interested in any type of military culture or just like military pop culture, Band of Brothers. Do, Do you it. Do you have a favorite episode? <sighs> Chris, do you have a favorite episode of Band of Brothers? A particular episode or a particular moment that um, sticks in your mind? I think that one episode that I've talked about before where the guy gets separated, he's off on his own. I can't remember the name of the character. Um, yeah, he gets into like the barn, and he kills the German dude. Mm-hmm. That that one stands out to me. Um, I wouldn't say I have like a favorite one because I see it as like, it's all of a piece. It's all one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, one it's, giant, it's one giant movie. To ten me. hour That's movie. That's what yeah. Band of Brothers is to me. Like yeah. when they're in Bastogne, know. that one's really good. Yeah, Ugh, that's, that's a, a great one. one. I think the first two episodes are awesome. 
Yep. Like when they're getting obviously the train up. Curry. Like, we're running curry. Yeah. And they're like, I think the men will have pasta tonight. And then he comes <laughs> in, he's like, get up, we're running curry. Yeah. Like that's you, that's a really good scene. Uh the train up in when they go to uh when they go to England and do the training exercise. Yep. That's awesome. Getting ready parachute school, getting ready to jump in, and then the actual jump in. Yeah. Is when they're all separated. Yep. And then they just like have to, you know, gather everybody. And they do like, the trench you? warfare. They kind of start gathering up yeah. with people. Yeah. Like that's in my mind, that was chaos. That must have been chaos. Because, I mean, if you've ever done a, like, a high-level, like, parachute exercise, you don't know who anybody is. <laughs> like, I, in my mind, we do something called MLAT in regiment. It's one of our specialties, which is, like, an airfield takeover. And, like, you have an entire regiment jumping onto an airfield. And yeah. you have to find your platoon area. And you have to, like... it's. It's not like your team leaders there telling you where to go and whatnot. It's like at the lowest level, you have to rely on like Private Joe Smith to like be able to jump successfully, like pack his parachute off the runway and then navigate to the assembly area. Yep. And it's like it's chaos. There's literally and then not to mention you're not just getting there. You have to like physically clear the runway. So if I'm like landing next to my assembly area, but I'm there's a runway with me, I see like a dude from another company like clearing it by himself instead of going to the runway or going to the assembly area. I literally get with him and we like have to clear the thing. And I'll be like, okay, I gotta go, man. And he'll be like, okay, you got another guy. All right, I, I, I'm out of here. I gotta go. And then uh, and, and like, who are you? Which company are you with? He's like, Bravo, uh, hey, who, Charlie. And he's like, hey, come help me real quick. So it's <laughs> yep. like, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. But it's absolute chaos. Yeah. Because you look up and you always have to look up because there is planes just dropping people and dropping and you can actually get jumped on. Yeah. So you're like, you're always looking up and everything. And that's it's absolute today. chaos. That's today. You think about yeah. it, that's your experience today after it's been around for a when couple I had decades. Night vision, yeah. You know? And, and I this is see. on a mass scale. Yeah. On a yeah. mass scale for real in a European country, dude. Just crazy. Yeah. And you have no idea. And yeah. at least we had GPS and stuff. And back then it was just like map and compass. But if you broke something, it's like you're fucked. Yeah. Uh, I think my, yeah, that would, my, the, the beginning of it, just the initial jump in the train up. And then I also am a big fan of when they're doing the stalemate or they're on the standoff with the Germans in the foxholes and it's snowing. Yeah. That's yep. a crazy yep. part just because you're like, oh my God. Thinking about all the cold weather gear I got issued that like <laughs> I still was cold. Yeah. These guys had like wool. And they yeah. were over there for years. Like yeah. a deployment lasted years yeah. for some of these. And they didn't go home for years. Being you know? snowed on and like yeah. getting frostbite and like not having any rations and running low on supplies. And like that's absolute war fighter. That's why that's the greatest generation, I th- in my opinion, anyways. <laughs> for that, yeah, for, for holding us off from the brink of tyranny, you know. Yeah. Um, my favorite moment in that entire series is when Spears runs across the town to go talk to the dudes and then he runs back through enemy lines. He does it twice. Yeah. Because apparently that actually happened. And I just think that that's like, you just have to be, you have to be a, a different kind of person. Yeah, and yeah. Spears in the in the show, Spears is kind of like. Wells Fargo presents one of the surest ways to grow your money: a Wells Fargo CD account, where you can earn a five point zero zero percent annual percentage yield on an eleven month term with a minimum opening deposit of five thousand dollars. Visit a Wells Fargo branch or wellsfargo.com backslash CD rates to open a CD account and start growing your savings with us. Wells Fargo Bank, N.A., member FDIC. He kind of just doesn't care. Yeah, he's got to screw loose. Which kind of gives him his greatness. Like, it it gives him the ability to do what he does. Yeah. Because there's just something about it that just doesn't care. Like, when he shoots all those German soldiers... All oh, the captured, yeah. they're just... There's and captured he gives digging, them, and he gives them all cigarettes. And then, and then he, he walks just mows up. them down. Yeah, and he just mows them. They're like, did you... And he's like, and he just walks off. Yeah, you know? what the heck. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, Band of Brothers. I actually just watched this one on the, our list, like, a couple days ago, because I was bored and I wanted to. Zero Dark Thirty. Hey, classic, man. Classic yeah, one. This is of a, of a, of a, a major event. Yeah. The getting um, of Osama yeah, Bin Laden. The killing of Osama Bin Laden. <laughs> um it's slow though. The movie is slow. It is slow. The only parts I was like super about it was the beginning during the interrogation, <laughs> which is just like Monday, yeah, Tuesday, Tuesday what, what day? Monday, like, going in the box. Thursday, You're going in the box. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, go in the box. <laughs> but that's like that's a cool interrogation scene. And then uh my and then the actual clearance at the end when like Chris Pratt is one of the yeah. Seals. Chris Pratt's one of the yeah. operators. And yeah. then you have what? Who I just had this list pulled up. I mean, yeah. Jessica Chastain. I feel like it's one of those things. This is one of those artistic license things where, you know, obviously, I mean, I, you think the, the effort to get and find Osama bin Laden and to execute on his on the attack was a coordination of like hundreds of government employees, probably yeah. over years, you know. Yeah. And Jessica Chastain and like her little team, like kind of 
maybe just represent all those people. Like, yeah. I don't know if there was an actual... It wasn't just one person that found them, you know? Yeah, I yeah. Mean, obviously, there was agencies, like you said, of hundreds of people doing... There's, like, a, good, um, like, put a... There's a good documentary called Manhunt, where they Man interview Man a bunch Hunt. of the people. Yeah, you should check uh, it out. It, it's, it's not, like, super long, but it's, like, the people that actually worked on doing it. And then you see just how many people it took. Yeah, yeah I mean, so, it took so yeah. long. I mean, what we got them in, what, 20... 2012, 2013. Did we yeah. get him? When did we get him? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. Let's see. Uh, the when movie did we came kill out in like 2012 and it came out 18 months after we got him? So oh, man, they were on that thing, man. Yeah. yeah. It like, oh, 2011. It insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what? 11 years later? Yeah. Almost, yeah. About 11 years later. Yeah. But the, at, the part that like jazzed me up about it. Um, was there at least one of my favorite parts was the interrogation and then the actual clearance of the facility, like them yeah. doing it. I Super thought it was black ops, dude. very accurate. Yeah. Like the actual clearance was like super accurate. It was super slow. The only thing I had like a gripe with was when they all are like going up the stairs to like take Osama. There was like 13, 14 guys in all there, the <laughs> which honestly I can't like, I don't know the, how, you know, the SEAL teams are how they like compromise but in rangers there would be like maybe one squad tops yeah. and there would be only like four guys going up mm. so that would be mm. like one team so mm. like you split it but i don't know how they like what their ttps or an sops or whatnot but uh yeah no i think it was really well and i love the fact that they like film it in night vision so you literally feel like you're like sitting on top of the compound and like looking around with night vision goggles yeah man like it was it, yeah it's I, immersive it's it, immersive yeah i mean the equipment isn't a- accurate like, like obviously the, the costumes department wasn't like you know full dev grew like we know exactly what to do yeah but uh <laughs> i i still you know i think it was a very respectable scene and i was watching it and i was like this is really good yeah, this looks really lifelike. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and I guess that also Chris Pratt was like his first like actiony. military actiony military immersion because then we have terminal list now. But yeah, so he he uh, he fills he does the action thing for pretty well. And and then uh, that was the first time I remember seeing Jessica Chastain in anything. Mm. Uh, and uh, I thought she did she did, she has like this kind of understated uh, performance or power you know to her performances, which I really appreciate. So yeah, totally. Well, yeah, that's Zero Dark Thirty for y'all. Check yeah. it out if you haven't. It's cool. But yeah, the first scene's awesome, and then the rest is slow, and then it has an awesome, badass ending. Yeah. We could talk about this one just real quick, Act of Valor. Oh. Uh, it's, it, I like it. real life. I put this one on here because it, it is real life in that it was the Navy SEALs are actually real Navy SEALs. Yeah, and you they're can not tell actors. By their really bad acting. Yeah, they <laughs> like, also use live ammunition in the oh, movie. Oh, did they? Yeah. Like oh, wow. This, yeah, they use live ammunition throughout the entire movie, I think. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Like, you can't, can't do that anymore. Can't do that anymore. Uh, no. Because it was SEALs doing it. So they're like, oh, I guess we trust you. Yeah. And before Alec Baldwin fucking kills them. Was yeah. Like, you could get that insured. <laughs> that, we're done with it. We're done yeah. with that phase <laughs> yeah. of, of movie yeah. making. Uh, pretty soon it'll all just be CGI. My favorite. Uh, I I mean it's brutal too. Like it starts off with that uh, the bombing of mm-hmm. the, the ice cream truck bombing. Yeah, and it's just like it shows like this little kid on fire and stuff like it's brutal, man. Yeah, I mean that's real life though, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. no, I appreciate I appreciate that. You know, sometimes no for for shit. yeah for for story purposes for the for just like accuracy purposes, man. It gets to that brutality of war, man. You yeah. know, and what and what people are willing to do. You know, we don't really. I think it's like, you know, you want to offend anybody. You want to talk about like Islamic terrorism anymore, you know, it's but like, like yeah, dude, people until you out actually there, see it, they believe and you man. get like that image burned in your, your skull and you're like, this is fucking real life. Yeah. Like there is no sugarcoating shit anymore. It's like, eh, yeah, there is evil out there. Yeah. So I, yeah, I appreciate it. It's been a while since I've seen Active Valor. I should probably watch it again, but the, the lack of acting ability really keeps me from doing that. <laughs> my favorite, my actually, I, my favorite scene actually in the entire movie is the interrogation scene where the Islamic dude the middle eastern dude is being interrogated he's an actor and then they have the guy from the team who's interrogating him and it, it you can tell that it was improvised but like kind of guided a little bit and stuff and i just really it's like it feels real you know because that guy is really using his interrogation tactics to get yeah. this guy to talk and he's like threatening him you know he's like we're gonna come after your family you know you better talk you know you better give me what i want to hear and so and it's just it's just really straightforward and brutal you know i'm sorry you know what's distracting me right now huh is your my, your headphones? Is that connected to your nipple? I mean, that's it not totally on my looks nipple. Like a nipple clamp. It's right next to my. Okay. It's like a millimeter away from my nipple. If you're watching the YouTube, nipple. 
Just I could actually, you know, you know, for, for I don't the, know. It, for it the Patreon, we looks, used to be extra footage there, you know, right it there. It literally there looks there like you chose to like just attach that to your nipple. Yeah. And it's just yeah. There you go. That's now good. this is uh I'm this sorry. is you gotta pay for the Patreon to get to exactly. see this, folks. We're gonna, we're gonna blur content. it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> okay. Anyway, NFSW. Yeah, not safe for work, folks. Uh, uh, well, what do you think, man? Anything else you want to mention? Honorable mentions here. I think we got a bunch, man. We got a lot of, of twelve strong. I 12 think strong. is totally cool. Yeah, Green uh, Beret uh, invasion of Afghanistan. Yeah, the first team in uh, yep. working with the uh, Northern the, Alliance. Yeah, the Northern Alliance, and I think that was great. I mean, it definitely. I think it showcased you're like they didn't know what the fuck was going on. Like they just really had to worry about what they like had immediate control over because. Yeah. All the even though the Northern Alliance was like fighting the Taliban and Al Qaeda, uh, they still were fighting each other. It was a loose alliance. It was literally a yeah. very loose alliance, and I think like, it was super cool that they like had the only way to navigate that terrain was by horseback. So yeah. they had to do that. They called them the horse soldiers. The it horse was actually soldiers. originally the movie was called originally horse soldiers, but that's kind of sounds weird. And if you say it too fast, it sounds like you're saying horse, horse soldiers. soldiers. <laughs> Don't want that. That's no, not you want that horse type of soldiers. movie. No, wrong movie. Yeah. Um, but, uh, no, yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, Chris Hemsworth, I think does a good job. Yeah. I really appreciate um, his performance. Killer cast, dude. Michael killer Pena. cast. Yep. Yeah. Um, what one else thing that, uh, who's the salty platoon sergeant? Oh, Michael Sheen. Michael Sheen. Yep. He plays a really good Great soldier. actor. Yeah, great, great actor. actor. Yeah. Um, I think it's not only the beginning of it, for some reason, I wanted to mention this in a previous episode where we were talking about the terminal list in mm-hmm. our going rogue episode, mm-hmm. the last one. And like, I wanted to mention 12 strong because we were talking about like soldiers value their men more than their families. Yep. And like what would compel someone to continuously leave their family and like knowingly cause damage. And like, obviously because you love the men more than your family. Otherwise you wouldn't do it. Right. You would stop. Yep. And I think Michael Sheen played like a really, there was like the scene where he's like packing up his stuff and the wife's like, you leaving again? He's like, yep. And she's like, you got to tell the kid. And he's just like, (laughs) you leaving again, dad? And he's like, yeah, I'll be back. And then the wife, I think this is a great line. And he's and the wife's like, he or Michael Sheen says I love you or something like that, and she's like I love you when you get back. So, and then <laughs> it's like okay, you're knowing at that point you're knowingly like this is what this is why I think you love the men more than you love your actual family because <laughs> otherwise you would totally like stop and find a way out and like be there for them. This is why I thought in Terminal List that he actually was more upset over all his men dying than uh, his family getting killed. It was that just drew him over the edge. That was like one too many. You know, I have a personal uh, a personal connection to this movie. I, I mean, other than the fact that I got to audition for it, which I've mentioned multiple times, but uh, yeah. Lauren Chavez, <laughs> Lauren Chavez Myers, who plays uh, who plays Michael Pena's wife. Yeah, uh, she and I were in a movie together. Really? Yeah, it's a very. Very not well known movie, and you should never watch oh, it. House of the Dead no, Three. You've, you've mentioned this because someone found it. Oh, somebody found it. Yeah, uh, yeah. It? Missing you. Missing you. Indie film, twenty ten. Um, but uh, I didn't. I don't. I, sorry. I yeah, that. we we talked about that a long time ago on another podcast. Yeah, yeah. Because then someone went out and found like screenshots of it. Yep. And stuff yep, like and that. It's not a very good movie. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Lauren. Lauren's a great actress. But the movie's not very good. She's the best part of that movie. I will admit, I'm not good in that movie either. So, <laughs> what's her name again? Lauren Chavez Myers. She's an actress. She had had a good has had a career. Hopefully, has a good career still. Uh, played Michael Pena's. Oh yeah, dude, uh, yeah. you are number. When I Google "missing you," Lauren Chavez Myers, you are the first one that pops I'm, up. I'm top cast. build in you that are movie, top baby. Bill, dude, are you accredited on Lauren. IMDb? I, yeah, it's a credit on IMDb. Oh my God, have, you're on I, the cover. I have yet to remove it from my IMDb You list. are on the cover, my friend. <laughs> Look at you. Oh my God. Yep. I have to watch this movie. Okay. You're literally in the trailer. Let's move on. Let's, Let's not move. talk about <laughs> this <story> again. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. What they filmed this with? Uh Oh, I'm uh, some HD cameras back in yeah. 2010. Oh, you she's know? like a meth addict. There you are, peering around the corner. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm lost. In, I'm lost in this real quick. <laughs> No, it's good. Yeah, Lauren Chavez Myers, big shout out. Maybe we'll have her on the show sometime. Yeah, she's yeah. been in a couple things. She was in. Uh, I love she... that uh, you clearly don't want anyone to know about the movie. Yet you're the only person that ever brings it up. I'm the only one yeah. that ever like, brings it up. Like this movie that I'm really embarrassed over. Don't look it don't, up. But don't I'm gonna tell you about this, it. So you watch look this it up. movie. Don't watch this movie. Watch this movie. Don't watch this movie. Watch. This Israel's movie. just telling you to watch it, so they'll like approach him for like because uh, they'll get a bunch of random ass interest in it, and they're gonna be like, <laughs> "We want a sequel," and they're and he's gonna get a phone call. Yeah, missing well, like, you ten too. years later. Still yeah, missing. ten years later. Huh? Yeah, missing you too. Ten years missing later, we'll do a retrospective. Instead of missing you too, still missing you. Still missing you. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, what you want to name one more and then we'll move on. One more. This is the only one I I just wanted to mention this one. We don't have to talk about it too too much because it's not necessarily military related, but only the brave also has Lauren Chavez Myers in it. Oh, no, uh it's about the uh it's about the firefighters who lost their lives, the Arizona hot shots. The hot shots. Yeah. Oh, I've heard about this. Back movie. In, I haven't uh, seen it. Yeah, nineteen out of twenty of them died in twenty thirteen. And I actually got to do a, a week's worth of PA work on this. But anyway, it's just it's just tragic, man. Based on a true story, the Prescott, uh, Arizona wildfire. Uh, yeah, and they just got caught in a box candy, man. And uh, it's a great crew, great cast, uh, great story. It actually came out, I think, around the time when a bunch of wildfires were actually going on in 2017. Mm-hmm. And it did not do well in the box office. I feel bad. But it's a great movie. Josh Brolin, uh, Miles Teller's in it, Jeff Bridges, Jennifer Connelly. A bunch of people. James Badge Dale, Taylor Kish, Kish. So Kish. Kish. Anyway, just a good one based on a true story. If you haven't seen it, it's a heavy duty movie, so be ready for a tear fest if you're like me, if you're an emotional dude. Yeah, self sacrifice. It's, it's heavy, man. It's really heavy. So but anyway, good stuff. That's good stuff. Okay. Well, folks, let us know what you thought of this list. Uh send us an email. Did send we miss anything? Yeah. Should we do what another episode? What would you add to this we list? We could definitely do, do ha- another episode based on how many oh, we, can we did totally not talk do. about on the list. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we have at least, you know, half of the movies we mentioned, <laughs> but we're out of time to yep. talk about it. Because we have a fan question that is itching to hear our answer. And this fan question comes to us from Greg from the Yield PCFM Gmail inbox. He wants to know. What action or military person in pop culture do you most identify with? <sighs> oh, my Brother. God. There are so many people that this question, you know, might have a little bit of silence for me while I think very, well, very hard. I actually, ha- I actually have one right away. Uh, you ever heard of the movie Love and Monsters? Love and Monsters. No. Uh, 2020 film uh, starring Dylan O'Brien. Uh, post-apocalypse, it's like a meteor falls to Earth and all these monsters start mutating, coming out, it starts mutating everything. It's actually like an action comedy or like a, a adventure comedy. But one thing I like about this movie is that Dylan O'Brien's character is a coward at the beginning of the movie. Really? Like m- paralyzing, like paralyzing fear. Like the, in the mo- there's a moment in the beginning of the movie where there's a monster that gets into his compound or his little underground base and he sees it and he freezes. Like he in in like and somebody else kills it and he has this journey of like growing like he has this love Jessica Henwick plays Amy uh, whose name is spelt the same as our friend Amy actually Very um, cool. but uh, he has to he loves her so much that he wants to go to where she's at and it's like eighty miles away across mm. like alien infested land and he has to go on it's a classic hero's journey which is probably why I like it so much but he he overcomes that fear and I and I say that because. Like, I have dealt with a lot of fear in my mm-hmm. life, you know, even going through the military and things like that, even overcoming things, like even even after the fact of overcoming things, for some reason, there's still this like residual fear. I'm like, I just, I just did it. I can do it, you know, and, and my journey more recently, especially with like going into content creation and really kind of trying to carve out our own space, you know, out there in the great big world of content creation, it's just reminding myself of my abilities and my capabilities. Like I can do this. I'm fine. I can, you know, I, if I don't know how to do something, I can learn how to do it. And just like, it's just now the fear is just like a speed bump. Mm. I just have to push past it for a little bit and then I'm fine. But it's, it, it's almost always there, you know? Yeah. So anyway, I really like loving monsters, like dealing with that fear. I think it was, I thought it was a great depiction of like a hero's journey of him getting over that fear. So that's it for me. Very cool, man. Uh, just off the top of my head, someone that sticks out was on this list actually. So, uh, Basically, Josh Hartnett plays Staff Sergeant Matt Eversman in Black Hawk Down. <laughs> and he, a ranger. Yeah, he's, he's a ranger, and A, that's why I identify him. <laughs> because, you know, and then not to mention, he's a squad leader of that squad, and mm. just his leadership style in the movie, yep. you know, I I was that, I was like that. So instead of being like, you know, a fire breather and just, uh, you know, just being a dick all the time and whatnot. I was more like personable and yep. like, instead of, you know, I was trying to be my private's friends really. I, I wanted to build trust and like, I was more about like servant leadership than like you respect me because 
you like the person I am and you want to work for me versus you respect me because I have a rank and you fear the repercussions if you yep. don't. Negative reinforcement. Yeah, negative reinforcement. I wasn't really like that, man. I was like, I was more like, I treat you like an adult and, uh, you know, then you respect me for that. And like, if you fuck up, it's like, okay, you get a little boo-boo and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't, you know, I, his leadership style in the movie, he's more like really down to earth and he's, you know, instead of like breaking his men down, he's just like building them up and reassuring them that's going to be okay. So that I like identified that with how I was when mm-hmm. I was in and how I still am in my position uh i think i think that he he portrays a good ranger squad leader at least like he cares about his men yeah. and that's what and i care about my guys too right more on. my family uh <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> may your family never yeah, listen to right. this podcast may my family not listen to this podcast <laughs> uh, but yeah no the uh, josh hartnett i think does a good job in that movie but right, uh right hope on. we answered that question so now it's time for the game the game time let's see here it is time right. for the game oh uh um, what's the game chris well I thought this one up while I was sitting on the toilet. Very cool. <laughs> and no, I wasn't pooping, you degenerates. It's I called Poo Patrol. I <laughs> like a proper gentleman. <laughs> like a proper gentleman. Too much information? Probably. But <laughs> uh, okay. it has nothing to do with that has nothing to do with anything about the game. Uh, <laughs> this game is called Salute the Rank, Not the Man. Mm, so little band of brothers. Reference. In contrary to what I just said. <laughs> Well, well, it's in so reference gonna... to officers whom you can never respect. So, yeah, uh, I think actually, like Captain Sobel, or not Major Sobel in uh, Band of Brothers, there's a point where when Spears becomes a captain, he runs mm-hmm. into Sobel again, and Sobel doesn't want to salute him, and he says, "You salute the rank, not the man, Sobel." Yep. And so then he salutes him. Anyway, yep. that's kind of what made me think of it. So I'm going to say part of the name of a character, and you tell me what rank they are in oh, whatever man. pop culture world nice. exist okay nice. it's really simple okay. so simple even an officer could play it hey oh hey yo. zing oh, take that all you lieutenants listening um <laughs> i'll tell you the movie or game uh if you ask me to but i'm not gonna okay. just give you that okay so if okay. you say uh, i'm really stuck here can you just tell me what movie it's from i'll tell you sure. so the warm-up is blank a pone that would, that would be Apone from Aliens. That would be Sergeant Apone. It is Sergeant, correct. Okay, so you get how it's going to work. That I'm going to say easy. blank. I, I may not say blank. I may just say the person's name. Okay. Um, it's just I didn't know any other part of Apone's name. <laughs> Where's Apone? Um, Sergeant's gone. Let's get the heck out of here. Exactly. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Nathan R. Jessup. Jessup. Oh. Jessup. Nathan R. Jessup. Uh, private. You, private first would class. You like me to, would you like me to say the name of the movie he was in? Yeah. Or game? Yes. Yes. From A Few Good Men. Oh. Oh, Nathan R. Jessup. 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 I'm gonna say private first class. Is he talking about the? Is he talking about the Jack Nicholson character? Who is the character? Who is the Jack Nicholson character? Oh, Nathan R. Jessup, because he was a colonel. Oh, was he a colonel? But I mean, if that's who he, I can't remember his name. I can't remember Jack Nicholson's name. You want to just send it? Just yeah, send let's it. just send yeah. it. Colonel. Thank colonel Nathan colonel. R. Yeah. Jessup. It is Colonel. It nice. is Jack Nicholson's character. Hey, nice. okay, good. Okay. Jessup sounded so familiar. It did too. Right. I mean, this is gonna be this is gonna be like Smith. <laughs> gonna be Johnson. You guys, you're gonna do fine. Trust <laughs> me. Okay, Avery Johnson. Oh my God. Sergeant Avery Johnson. That's right. Is that all you got? <laughs> yes, he's Sergeant. It's from Halo. Okay. Right. Nice. Thank yeah, okay, thank you. John Miller. Miller. John Miller. 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 Would you like oh, to man. know the movie? Yes, yes. please. You You're like gonna to have more? to. There's no way, because I just I know all these people in real life. <laughs> Saving Private Ryan. Miller. Yeah, Miller. Um Captain. Isn't that Tom Hanks' character? John Miller? Yes. Yes, it so. is. Let's yeah, go with Cap- Captain. Captain. It is Captain. Captain John Miller. That is Tom Whew. Hanks' character. Nice, nice, nice. Whew. All right. We're going to be all right. Okay. We're going to be okay. You're doing great. Doing you guys, okay. you're doing fine. You're 100% so far. Okay, sounds good. Dan Taylor. Taylor. Taylor, Taylor. Can you give me the movie? Yeah, you got to give me the movie. Forrest Gump. <laughs> Forrest Gump. Taylor. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan. Ice cream. <laughs> Happy New Year, Lieutenant Dan. Yeah. Lieutenant Dan. Yeah, Lieutenant. That's correct. <laughs> Lieutenant okay. Dan Taylor. Nice, nice. 
Uh, I'm just going to give you the movie or Yes, game. please. <laughs> just because There's no way. Dan it, Taylor. It, now that oh, I'm like going through it, I'm like, yeah, if it doesn't like st- immediately strike your brain, it's not going to. Okay. This next one should, though. Guile from Private. Street Fighter, the video game, not the movie. Oh, oh what? I think he's a sergeant. I think he's a sergeant. Is that the guy with the big hair? Yeah. The flat top, the big flat yeah. top. Or is he an officer? I would... Ooh. Lieutenant Guile, Captain Guile, Sergeant Guile, Major Guile, Private Guile, Staff Sergeant Guile. Does it this ever one's probably say, the hardest one on the list. Yeah, does it ever say his rank? Or is it, are we thinking of the Jean-Claude say, like, Van Damme? Think about like, a. it has to be a crazy rank that like sounds Colonel. cool. Major, I feel like Colonel I would say Fulbert, Major. I want to say like he has the blue UN beret in the movie and it's Colonel Guile. I would say Major. Major? Because that like sounds like Major Payne. Right, let's go know? with Major. Major. Good instincts, Cam. It's Major. Hey! Hey! Okay. Nice. To be fair, in the movie, he was Colonel Guile. Oh, oh nice! Okay. I remember the bird Good across his instincts. hat. His beret, yeah. Who plays him All right. in the movie? Jean Claude Van Damme. Oh, maybe. really? Oh, yeah. In Street Fighter? Oh, yeah. I didn't even, I've not, never seen that it's movie. It's not a good movie. Okay, it's not a good movie whatsoever. Right. <laughs> Let's okay. go watch it. This one's kind of a two-parter. I mean, it's really not a two-parter. It's just the same person plays both of these people. No. Um, Alan Dutch Schaefer. Dutch. Tom Schwarzenegger. Major. What movie? That is correct. Predator. It's Predator. 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 Yeah, it's Predator. Dutch. Dutch. Yep. He's a major. Okay. He's and major. also Arnold Schwarzenegger. John Matrix in Matrix. Commando. Gotta kill you, Matrix. Matrix. Oh, oh John Matrix, huh? Is he a captain? I mean, I think he's an officer, yeah. But he's retired. He's like he's out retired. of it. Yeah. I would. I don't know. Captain. I can't use my bad hands, Matrix. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, Captain. Captain, let's go, Captain. Your first miss. It's uh, Colonel. It's but, Colonel. Colonel, Colonel Matrix. Matrix. But I'm not gonna count that one because it was like an aside one. I couldn't decide between the two. So <laughs> okay. Well, in all fairness, that Chris, one doesn't count. At one point, you're still 100%. he was a captain. <laughs> Okay, you ready? Johnny yeah. Rico. Rico. Johnny Rico. Johnny yeah, Rico. Starship Troopers. Yeah, he starts off as a private. He, yeah, he's he makes his Sergeant way up. Sergeant First Class. He yeah, gets like Battlefield promoted to like. Yeah, he's like you're my platoon sergeant. You're in charge until I, you die or I find somebody better. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna say private because he starts off as a private. No, it's not that. It's oh, not okay. what he starts off as. It's what, it's what he, he does. Ends up. Oh, it's when he ends up as. Well, he ends he up, ends as, up like, as like the platoon sergeant. Yeah, the, the but leader of the Rico's he, ru- or yeah Rico's Roughnecks. Um, Which I don't know the rank structure of the Starship Troopers. I I'm don't. gonna say staffs. I'm gonna say uh, um, what is it? First Sergeant. I'm gonna say. First I'll Sergeant. say Sergeant Major. Okay. It's Lieutenant. Oh, lieutenant. Really? He just oh, gets battlefield promoted to officer. He ends yeah. up as a lieutenant when Michael Ironsides dies. Yeah. I you know what you to do. do this. I expect you to do this. All right. Yep. That's the last one. All right. Here we go. From Mass Effect, Shepard. You know this. Commander Shepard. Commander Shepard. Commander. It's Commander. Very good, guys. Yay. You got is one. Commander an actual rank? I mean, it or is. In Mass Effect, it is. Yeah, one, it's, it's captain two. of a ship, I suppose. You know, It's also a rank in uh, Star Trek, rank. so maybe it's like a naval thing. One. Maybe. Yeah, probably a naval thing. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You got seven out of eight. I'll take it. Nice. I so will have 87.5%. Nice, eighty-seven nice. point five. That is definitely passing. Good game, hey, Chris. Your games are always so elegant and simple. I know I like they're it. simple, and yet I can't come up with anything close to them. Good job, Chris. <laughs> you guys did really well. Good, thanks, yeah. Chris. Well, really good. Uh, that's it, folks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for getting real with us on this episode. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Catch us on the Patreon and the Bias of Coffee. We will catch you on the next one. Cue music. Cue music.